Hey guys, Joe here with Joe Martin MVC. Today we're just doing a cute little video of what goes into keeping Izion as wide as I can, as well as using this as a test for the new Sony A7S II that my brother is letting me use for the channel. Hopefully I'll be able to get some notably better quality footage with this camera over the prior GoPro I was using, and not have nearly as many issues, namely the overheating issues I was having. But back to the pup. So this is usually a weekly task for us, normally on Fridays, so I can have a clean puppy for the weekend. Fortunately for me, he enjoys his bath time so it's nice and easy to bathe him and only takes about 15 to 20 minutes from start to finish. We start off by just getting both his primary coat and undercoat nice and wet with the hose. You saw me initially spraying the water away from him before spraying him down since it was the end of the day and I knew the water coming out of the hose would be way too hot initially. Next up is applying soap to him. Since he has an undercoat, it was always difficult for me to make sure he got sufficient soap coverage all over and wanted to find a way to make this much easier. So, the solution was a car washing foam cannon for hoses. I got this one from Walmart for around $25 and it works absolutely terribly for if you want to foam a car. But for a 70 pound dog, absolutely perfect. It creates a nice and thick lather that easily coats him and then I can work the foam into his fur and get all the dirt and debris and god knows what else out and make sure it actually penetrates into his undercoat. Conveniently enough, this actually even uses less soap and water than mixing it up in a bottle and applying it. As for the soap, I'm using Groomer's Edge Midnight White Shampoo. It's a coat winding and color brightening shampoo that mixes 15 to 1, so I put 1 ounce of soap into the dispenser bottle and fill the rest up with water and it works perfectly. Once we've worked all the soap in, we go back to our sprayer nozzle for the hose, of which this is just a basic metal fan nozzle, nothing fancy, and we start hosing his yawn off. Since he has an undercoat, I make sure to press the hose right up to his skin to get the water to penetrate as deep as possible and get all the soap off of him. You can also see that there's a ton of foam in the bath here that I was trying to get out for the next step. And now it's time to begin the drying process. This is always the longest part and takes up easily two thirds of this video. You can see my failed attempts at telling Izion to do the dog shake thing that they do, whatever it is. Uh, it, he, of course, waits until I'm standing next to him to do this. Why wouldn't he? For drying him though, I'm using the Go Pet Club Dog and Cat Pet Grooming Hair Dryer. I'd personally love to watch someone try to use this on a cat, I, I just I can't see that ending well. Anyway, this little dryer is pretty awesome. I've mentioned it a couple times in my detailing videos because I'll also use this little beast to blow water out of crevices on cars before actually working on them. This thing offers both heat and a super strong blower, so it's actually able to fully penetrate Izion's coat and get him completely dry. It typically takes me 10-15 minutes with this dryer to get him completely dry and then let him go back in the house to, you know, cause more damage.
So that's all for this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed this random and fun video and test footage with the new camera. And I'm sure at least one person is wondering why I didn't mention the bathtub that I'm using. And that's actually because while it works alright, I don't want to recommend it to anyone, as I don't really feel that it's a high quality product. It came with straps with the collar to keep your dog in place, which was awesome when it worked, but those were not weather treated or weather resistant at all and completely disintegrated within a couple of months. And then the actual plastic basin itself isn't super sturdy, plus it has begun to fade a good bit and I fear it may actually crack or break soon and I bought it just at the beginning of 2019, so not even a whole year old yet. The other thing I don't like about it is that the grip pad that the dog stands on tends to retain a lot of water underneath, which promotes the growth of only God knows what. I plan to actually build a puppy washing station sometime in the near future, and I'll document that process when that time comes. As always guys, thanks so much for watching, and if you enjoy the videos I put out, it helps a ton if you share them. And if you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, it also will help the channel grow and allow me to keep putting out content for everyone. Thanks so much. Take care.